Welcome down to the shop everybody. I'm Bill and I'm here to teach you guys a little bit about mold making in our continued molding and casting video series here on the Punish Props channel. Today we're going to be making a one part mold. If you haven't checked out our silicone and our urethane videos yet, give them a look. That's kind of a primer on the materials that we'll be using. Also check out the master prepping video that we just did too. The pieces that get molded need to be cleaned up and looking really, really nice before we pour all of this wonderful liquid goo on it. So to get started, you've got a piece, a thing that you want to mold, and you have to decide if that can be done in a one part mold. Once you've figured out how you could maybe do that and sort of plan it out a little bit on paper, you need to decide where you're going to pour in your resin. All of these molds here are all one part molds. And this guy here is a big flat piece and you just pour the resin in through what would be the back of it. Some of these other ones are more cylindrical and the bottom of this will get cleaned up. It doesn't matter if there's a raw cast piece there because it'll just get trimmed off. And for example, this is the piece that I wanted to mold here. I added an extra bit of wood on the end. This is the pouring spout. That'll fill up with resin. It'll allow bubbles to escape from our resin. And then this part gets trimmed off of every cast piece once it gets pulled out of the mold. Whatever the case, a little planning goes a long way here. Figure out where your uh, pouring spouts are gonna be. Figure out if you have to cut any vents to let air out. Remember that this fluid is gonna be filling up a negative cavity in your mold. And as it goes with gravity, it may trap air bubbles if you have any overhangs. This is where cutting a vent into your piece or adding a vent uh, can help you out a whole lot and reduce bubbles in the finished product. Here's a quick diagram showing how resin would fill up a mold and how you would catch some bubbles in some of those overhangs. You also may need to trim a little bit of the silicone to let your piece escape from it afterwards. If this is really extreme, you'll have to make a two part mold. We'll get into that next week. But for a one part mold, you can definitely just cut a zigzag line down the side. This makes sure the silicone goes back in the same place. This will also allow you to remove both your master and all of the cut pieces later on. Again, not necessary for every single mold, but for deeper molds like some of these big fellas right here, definitely necessary. Once your one part piece for the mold is all set, you've got a pouring spout planned out, you can glue it down to your base material. This can be whatever you want, just make sure it's nice and sturdy. I like to use hot glue. Usually I'll glue it down to either a piece of wood or some stiff cardboard or foam core. Next, you need to build a box around your piece. This will contain the silicone. I like to make sure there's at least a good, I don't know, half an inch between the side of my piece and the side of the box, uh, unless it's a really, really big one, depending on whatever you're molding. Uh, this box is gonna contain the silicone, so it needs to be nice and sturdy, again, plastic or cardboard is actually really good. I like these sturdy cardboard tubes that I get from the hardware store or some of these smaller ones that you would use to hold a poster. Those are really good for cylindrical shaped pieces. And those also get hot glued around your piece to the base of your mold box. Then it's time to mix up your silicone and throw it in the mold. For simple molds like this, I like using tin cure silicones like uh, Mold Max 30 is pretty good, or TAPS uh, RTV is also a good one. You'll also have to figure out the volume of silicone to go in there. I like to use just normal math for this. Uh, for something like a tube, I can figure out the volume of this tube. And then for the piece in there, I can get a rough estimate of the volume of the piece. Then I subtract that from the volume of the tube to figure out how much silicone I need. Now this type of silicone gets mixed by weight. So I'll put a measuring cup on my kitchen scale and fill it up to the appropriate volume I need, but I'll keep track of how much weight that is. Then I'll know how much catalyst to mix in. This catalyst gets mixed in uh, using a 10 to one ratio, although whatever you're using will tell you on the container what the ratio ought to be. Then it's time to mix this super thick goo and you want to make sure you mix it really, really thoroughly using something like a popsicle stick or a giant screwdriver. I also like to take uh, the silicone and pour it into a second cup to mix it again because the walls usually don't get scraped down really well uh, and that silicone doesn't get really integrated. Uh, the great stuff about this type of silicone too though is that the goo is white and the catalyst is a color like blue or red. So you can really tell when it's been mixed all the way in. Now at this point, if you have a degassing chamber, you can throw your bucket in there and pull all the bubbles out using 
your sweet new tool. I like to make sure the silicone only fills about one third of the container I'm using so it doesn't overflow. Now, if you don't have a degassing chamber, you're not out of luck. You do still wanna make sure you get as many bubbles out as possible. You just want to use the bombs away method. Once your silicone is mixed, you can pour it from a really high height down to your piece, put the piece on the floor, let's say, and pour maybe from a uh, countertop surface. You pour it in a thin stream, and as that stream stretches, the bubbles, at least the bigger ones, will pop on their way out. Either way, you're ready to pour your silicone. The best case scenario is to pour it into the lowest spot of your mold and let it fill the mold as it goes and sort of creep its way over all of the little uh, detail bits on your master. Be super patient here. You will have to scrape down the sides of that cup a little bit and that will add some bubbles to it, but do that right at the end. If there are bubbles on the top of your silicone, not the end of the world. Now again, I like to make sure there's a good half an inch or so between the top of our master and the top of the silicone so that you've got a nice thick layer around all sides of your piece. Then we wait. A lot of these silicones take a good eight to 16 to more hours to cure. Usually I will pour silicone at night and it's nice and cured by the morning. I like to leave it in a warm spot uh, away from cat hair if you can. And then in the morning you can go check on your mold. When it's time to liberate your piece, you can take apart the box mold first, peeling it away from your silicone, and then very carefully peel your silicone off of your master. It should come off with very little resistance. This is where if you planned it, you may have to cut a seam in your mold to liberate your piece. Again, I like to add a little zigzag piece for registration uh, on the side of the mold. If all goes well, you'll have a glorious new mold ready to go. Uh, if all doesn't go well, don't worry about it. It happens to the best of us. There's a little bit of a knack to mold making and it takes quite a few tries to really get the hang of it, but stick with it, it's totally worth it. Now it's time to cast a piece out of your wonderful new mold. For these types of molds, it's generally pretty straightforward. I like to add a little bit of baby powder to the surface of the mold to act as a release to help pull your piece out once it's cured. Just dump in a little bit of baby powder, make sure it hits all the surfaces, and then make sure it all comes out. You don't want any clumps sticking in the little corners. If you have a can of air or an air compressor, you can use that to blast any big chunks of dust out. Then you can mix up your resin. For this guy, a little bit of Smoothcast 300 will work out really well for you. You'll have to measure out the volume of your master that you're replicating so you know how much resin to use. Then just split that number in half because you have side A and side B and they are a one to one ratio. That's math even an art student can do, like me. I like to mix each side into their own cup and then I'll pour the side B into the mixing cup. If I wanna add any tint, this is when I'll do it and mix it right into the side B. And then when I'm ready to go, mix the side A into the mixing cup and the reaction starts. You've got a very limited time to pour your resin. Make sure you stir it really well so that it's good to go. A good 10, 20 seconds of stirring and then pour it into your mold. If you've got a deeper mold that may have some undercuts or some detail pieces, it benefits to maybe pour in half the resin, slush it around a little bit, make sure you coat all the surfaces first, and then fill it up the rest of the way with the remaining resin. Once it's poured, you can sort of lean and tap your mold a little bit uh, to make sure any trap bubbles uh, escape from the surfaces on the inside. And if you have a nice big pouring spout on the top, that'll give them a place to go. And then you just wait for it to cure. Now, don't hover over your mold. Uh, you don't wanna be breathing in the fumes that are kicking off of that guy. And in fact, it's best to leave it in a nice well-ventilated area. Now, the Smoothcast 300 says it can be demolded in 10 minutes, but I like to give it a little bit extra time. Uh, but then you can pop it out of the mold. Again, very carefully, making not sure not to tear your silicone, but you can pop it out and you've got a perfect replica of your master. Congratulations, you've just molded your very first thing. You are now a mold maker. Well done. Thank you guys for checking out this video. Of course, next week we'll be doing two-part molds. We'll be using a lot of the same techniques here, but there's a bunch more things you have to consider when you're doing a two-part mold, so look forward to that. And, of course, we're doing uh, an FAQ video just on mold making in a couple of weeks, so if you have any specific molding and casting questions, leave them in the comments down below and we'll get to those in just a couple weeks. Also check out some of our older videos. We've done plenty of molding and casting before, so go give those guys a look, especially the uh, District 9 Matrix mold. That's a good one. Go check it out. Thanks again for watching everybody. Stick around, subscribe if you're new, 
and for crying out loud, go out there and mold something.